So I think it's time to start now. Okay, so I think um, one person already got the right uh, uh, idea. So, um, okay, I think one person already wrote. Let's see if anyone else. Um, okay, I think uh, one person says knight g4, but I think uh, the best is bishop takes h2. Bishop takes h2, it's a great gift, very thematic sacrifice that you have to always keep an eye on. Knight g4, I can probably defend with something like takes, takes and, um, and g3. But bishop h2 works very well because uh, king takes h2, knight g4. And now king g1 loses pretty routinely because I go queen h4, queen h2. And there's no other way to really defend uh, the mate because white cannot defend h2 square in no way. Cannot put the knight on f3, cannot put the bishop on f4, can't even go queen c7 because of the knight. So there's no way to defend the h2 square. So that means white has to move up. But if white moves up, black has attacking ideas like queen g5, threatening knight e3. <coughs> if f4, you can do this on passant. Guys, make sure you remember about this en passant. It's a theme that comes up a lot in chess. Um, and if king h3, you can still go queen g5 with the idea of queen h5, queen h2. You can also go bishop c8, threatening knight e3. So uh, black has a winning attack here. So white would need to go king h1, but then I can always just retreat and win the pawn. Uh, and this was a game I was playing against one of my 2300 friends where I was playing blindfolded with white. Uh, uh, yeah, I was playing blindfold with white and, um, <clears throat> and my opponent 2300 has, saw the board, but he trusted me and he didn't check bishop takes h2. Of course, if he thought I might make a mistake, he would do this. So that's the rule. The rule is you should never trust anyone not even a GM, because even Grandmaster could make a mistake sometimes. Uh, and uh, somebody asked a question, why not King h1, knight g4? I think then maybe I can play g3 or even bishop e2, and this gets a little bit unclear. Knight takes f2, king takes here, here, there. And yeah, you can win this rook, but um, white has two pieces for a rook then, and this will not work because it's not made, unfortunately. So uh, knight g4, bishop e2 is, is the problem. If queen here, then you have bishop g4 and bishop h3. It's a good question, though. A very good question. I think bishop d6 is uh, objectively the best move. But knight g4 certainly should be considered. Okay, so this was a pretty simple idea. Now I'll give you some exercises. I'll kind of ask you when is it a good idea to do the Greek gift? When is it not a good idea? <laughs> So let's uh, see this example that I had on the white side this time. And uh, let's see. And here we have a critical moment where my opponent, a strong uh, expert player, played queen d6, attacking my rook, but he allows bishop takes h7. Uh, so what do you guys think? Do you think it's... Uh, Good idea to do this bishop h7 here or, or not. Uh, try to be, uh, elaborate as much as you can with variation. Don't just say yes or no, but try to explain. Uh, mm -hmm. um, so c5 to, but c5, then queen e7, and then we will lose the chance to so sack. So obviously this is the something that you can only do right at the moment. Okay, so um, all right, I'm seeing a lot of answers. Um, so let's start uh, going over it a little bit, a uh, little by little. Again, if this was a smaller class, I would let you think a little bit longer, but, um, but here I'll kind of walk you through it. So first of all, if he goes king h8, then we go c5, and then we're happy. We stole a pawn, then we can retreat the bishop at the very least, and we're good. So he has to try to take. 
yeah, pawn on e5 would be would be nice, but okay, we don't have that. Okay, knight g5. So now king g8, of course, is or king h8 is easily refutable because after queen h5, once again, nothing can defend h7. And now it's a pretty easy mate. Rook d8, queen takes f7 here, check, check, checkmate. Pretty simple, straightforward here. So black has to move up, clearly. King h6, let's look at king h6 first. That's not what my opponent played. My opponent played king g6, which I think is more tricky. Uh, the question is how to play here. It looks, somebody just said that it looks unconvincing because the knight and the rook are both being attacked. And yeah, if white does not play correctly, it will not be convincing. But uh, thankfully I saw deeper and I found a way to get a winning attack. So any quick suggestions here? How to continue the attack here? Maybe you could play pawn to c5. Uh, uh, guys, uh, I want you to try to type in the answers via the chat because I don't want you to give away the answers to people who still want to think. So for answers, please just put it in the, in the chat. Don't say it out loud. Um, when I when I ask you for when the lecture is over and when we do the question and answers, then you guys could uh, uh, speak, speak up more. Um, okay, so let's, let's see, did anyone suggest the right move here? Actually, I don't think so. Okay, some, I think a few people did. Yeah, I think a few people did, yes. Okay, so the correct move is queen g4. Um, so queen g4 is winning because we're threatening queen h4 and queen h7. Uh, so, because you cannot take the rook, because it's going to be made. Yeah. So that's going to be a forced mate, and probably several different ways. And uh, if we go e5, then we go queen h4 check, and same thing, queen here, king here, and uh, I think, let's see, I think it's queen g7, queen here, and the uh, Queen f8, I guess, and white should still have a, a winning attack, yeah? But maybe that would be black's best defense to play e5, actually. Maybe. Um, but still, should not be enough. And if f5, we give a check, and the king cannot run here, which is important because this check, knight e4, attacks the queen and the king, and white's winning. So queen g4 would win in this case which is why my opponent played king g6. Now, um, instead of queen f8, can white play h4? Uh, let's see, king, king here, queen here. Oh, which position? Ah, okay, it's, uh, it was, I think, in, in the e5 line. Uh, can white play h4 here? Um, well, I think h4 does not actually do much because king takes h4 and there is no, there is no follow-up. Um, okay, so let's let's go back. Okay, so queen g4, so king g6. Now here, the same move queen g4 actually does not work as well, because here, black can now play f5, which is very strong, because queen g3, the square is controlled, and if white goes here, black has time to take this rook, and now after this check, king goes to f6, and the black king sort of escapes, and black is up a whole lot of material, rook and the uh, bishop. And white does not, not quite have enough here. <clears throat> Probably should lose the game now. So actually, queen g4 <clears throat> that would not work in this line. And I had to kind of calculate um, all of this ahead of time to make sure that I'm um, that I'm winning. Okay, so the question is, what should white uh, do in this position? Anyone see an idea? I think someone has made a right suggestion earlier after King uh, H6 suggested this move, which was not working there, but it works now. Very good, Zachary. Knight F7 is, is now the winning line. So E4 would not work because Queen takes D4 would exchange Queens, and then our attack is gone. Not to mention that Queen A3 might also be possible. And also, I think we don't... The problem is in this position, we have to play with more energy. We have to create some immediate threat. 
if we don't do that, we will lose our attack. Uh, originally, I saw the line 94. That was my original calculation. But then I saw this. And here it turns out I have nothing better than making a draw with knight of six, takes, check, and do perpetual, and so on and so forth. Because if I play knight g5, queen e3, king here, he can defend with queen d3. And he is defending the h7 square, right? So if he can defend the h7 square, we might not have that attack. Uh, but luckily I saw that I can play knight f7. So now if queen takes a3, we have forced mate and three moves. Check, uh, check, and a checkmate like this. So black had to take this guy, but then I gave a check. King h6, rook takes f7. Uh, and now if queen a3, I have a mating attack. That's just one of the ways, but there are several ways to do it, actually. And uh, if e5, I took... Okay, so he, at least he's controlling the g4 square, but I played rook f6, and, uh, and now I'm winning. Is knight f7 a decoy? I, I guess so, yeah. <clears throat> uh, getting rid of the pawn on f7 and then trying to go queen g4, and also I'm controlling this square. Yeah, so the point is that this is a position that I couldn't just play with h7 uh, just like that, right? I had to calculate because uh, if uh, I just play it, you know, based on feeling and then I, I end up being down a piece, then I kind of look silly, right? So it's important that when you play such a move, you have to analyze and calculate and try to figure things out ahead of time. All right, let's, let's look at now another example of this same Bishop takes h7 sacrifice. Um, this is a game between two relatively lower rated players. And uh, in this game, white uh, took on h7. So what do you guys think? Is it a good idea here or a bad idea? The bishop takes h h7 check here. Try to analyze. Don't just make quick conclusions. Um, so I see two people already gave me an answer within 20 seconds, but I think in 20 seconds, it's not so easy to, to analyze um, something like this. And also don't just say good or bad, right? It could, could very well be a, a, a mini mini mo guess, right? Make sure you explain, uh, you have to explain. Uh-huh. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, very good. I think now you guys are seeing the point, yes. So here it's not a good idea to take <clears throat> because after this and king g8, black has a very simple defense, which is to play knight of six, right? And, uh, and that's the one thing that <clears throat> you have to always remember. If they can defend the square... <clears throat> via moves like bishop f5 or knight f6, you have to think twice. It might just not work, right? So, um, so yeah, knight f6 would be very strong for, for black. Now, and that's why very often uh, in these attacking positions, in order for the Greek gift to work well, it's good to have the pawn on e5. If you don't have the pawn on e5, it often does not work as well. Every position is different, but you have to always calculate and analyze. Okay, question it. Does rook f3, rook h3 work? Well, the thing is our queen is attacked. So you have to also move the queen one square. And yeah, if black does not do anything, white could try to do something. But the problem is black will have time to defend. So let's say knight e7, rook f3, knight f5 or knight g6. And we'll have to move the queen and uh, we will lose our attack. Of course, white will always have practical chances here, but objectively, if black plays correctly, this will not go anywhere. That's the problem. But black, for some reason, did not see knight f6 and played rook e8. All right, so now what should white do in this position?
Right, of course, queen takes f7. <clears throat> because in the game, white played queen h7, and uh, blew a big part of the advantage, but um, because rook f8 could defend now. But queen f7 is just made in five, by force. <clears throat> so this guy, this 1300 player, made two instructive mistakes. You see, at the lower level, we sometimes uh, are tempted to, as soon as we see an interesting idea we like, we just play it uh, without analyzing. But that's always, always a mistake because sometimes you might get, get lucky, it might work out. Sometimes it might not work out, right? Um, and against a strong player, if you play enough bad moves, even one very bad move against the master will already be costly, right? So that's why in order to avoid these big mistakes, big blunders, there are two rules you can follow for calculation. So when you see a good move, my suggestion is this. Um, first thing you have to ask yourself is, is the move safe? Meaning, does opponent maybe have something against it? And in this case, you could see that it's just not safe, right? If you analyze a little bit, you realize that, oh, knight of six kills the line, right? So the line is not safe. The move is not safe. And then here, this 2300 made another instructive mistake. So he played queen h7. Is the move safe? Yes, it's safe. But there's another rule you should follow. Step two would be you ask yourself, is there a better move? Is there a move that's clearly better? And if you would have just asked yourself that simple question, is there maybe a better move than queen h7, it would not be hard to find that queen f7, right? But this is why it's important to not play too fast, avoid playing too much blitz or bullet until you're an experienced player. And if you want to really be serious with chess, you have to learn to analyze. Not just play the first move you see, but when you, you know, when you see an, um, an option, analyze it. Ask yourself, is it safe? Can my opponent do anything against it? Is there another alternative, better move? And for all that, um, you need time to, to think. So, I mean, once, if, if somebody is a super GM, like Carlson or Nakamura or whatever, they already feel the game so much that even in, in bullet or blitz chess, they can still play really, really well. Uh, even then, they make a lot of mistakes. Uh, like, for example, I'm a weaker GM than them, but I would not want to play uh, my long games at the same quality as, let's say, Hikaru plays his blitz games, if that makes sense. Like, I think, uh, I think my serious games would be higher quality than, let's say, uh, the best player's blitz games. So it just goes to show that fast moves don't lead to anything good very often. All right, well, let's continue. Um, so this one, I think, is a very interesting uh, example. Came from a London system. All right, so uh, how would you consider playing this position? How would you try to continue your attack here? So make sure, another thing you want to try to do is uh, try not to just give a one move solution. Try to, uh, let's say, analyze a bit uh, deeper. Um, so like, if you give one move, give a follow-up, okay? Explain what happens after that move. Uh, that's another way to become a stronger player because if you only give a one move solution, that means you might not be looking at opponent's ideas. Okay, so, um, yes, yeah, so I think you guys are getting it, yes. Bishop takes f6. Here we have to remove the guard, the knight, and then we have this Greek gift idea. Bishop takes h7, right? And uh, after king takes h7, we go queen h5, check. King here, queen f7, king h7. Yeah? And here white has at least a draw, but obviously white wants more than a draw here. White has a very good attack. Here, white should probably go knight g4, probably the best move. Attack the bishop, and then if the bishop moves, 
than rook e6. And white has a very strong attack. White played this move, which also looks winning. Rook e6, rook d6, rook e1. And uh, here, black made a mistake, uh, you know, allowing queen g6 and rook d6. Uh, what do you guys think would be a good defensive move for black here? So far, I think nobody mentioned the... Uh, okay, I think Zachary mentioned it. Okay, so I see a lot of queen d7s. I saw king h8, I saw rook d8. So the problem is white has some threats. If you go queen d7, I give a check, and then rook e8. And that will lose your queen, right? Because after takes, oops, not like this, of course. Queen takes, and uh, here white is winning the queen. And... Uh, if rook d8, same thing, check, and we win the queen. So white has this threat, right? Uh, king h8, same problem. So black has only one way to do it. Uh, it's rook f8. And this defense, because now queen h5, king g8, there is no real rook e8, I can play rook d8, and, and black is safe in this position. And if rook e6, rook e6, then rook f6, black, white is totally fine, winning. So rook f rook f8 is the correct. And if rook d6, queen d6 defends the rook conveniently. But yeah, this was kind of a hard defensive move, uh, which both sides probably missed. But I'm happy you guys found bishop f6 and bishop h7 quickly. That was that was good. That was a good implementation of the idea. So now, um, you know. When I when we're talking about attacking players, right, attacking games, how can I possibly give a lesson about attack, uh, how to attack, without you know uh, bringing up the greatest attacking player of all time, arguably Mikhail Tal. So we're gonna take a look at one game from Mikhail Tal. Okay, so e4, c6, d4, d5, Karakam, solid opening, but Tal uh, managed to create good attacking chances. And he played a relatively quiet system, but sometimes even in a quiet line, you can still create a, a very nice uh, attack. The knight of six, ch3. h3 is to stop bishop from coming to g4. h6, this move I don't like so much. I think black should play uh, develop normally. I don't see a point of playing h6 here. Uh, he was playing a weaker player. White got the bishop on f4. Pretty good square for the bishop, which makes sense. He'd stop bishop g5, so why not to play bishop f4? e6, knight f3, bishop d6, bishop takes d6, queen takes d6, c3, knight c6, castles, castles. Queen two, rook e8. All right, how do you guys think white should uh, uh, continue here? I think this is a, kind of an important moment. Because if you don't play the right move here, you might lose your advantage. And in fact, you might, yeah, now you, you will lose your attacking chances, certainly, and you probably will even lose your advantage. All right, looks like you guys got it, yes. Uh, we have to play knight e5, because if we go knight d2, normal developing, black will play e5. Break open the center, and then it will be very hard for white to develop any kind of an attack. In order to have an attack going, we have to keep black's pieces restricted, and then build some f4, knight d2, and put pressure on black's position. So, very good, guys. Queen c7, and now f4. The point of f4 is that we want to take back with f4 and open up that f-file. And we'll see that it comes very much in handy for white. 
knight takes c5, f takes c5, knight h7, knight d so queen h5, white's aggressively inclined, threatening bishop h7 followed by rook f7, for example. So black defended. Knight a3. He could have also gone knight d2, but he decided to uh, reposition the knight via e3 to g4. He had this plan in mind. A6. I think that was kind of silly because white wasn't going knight b5 anyway. I think black should have just developed the bishop because white played knight c2, queen d7, knight e3, queen e8. All right, so now this is, a, I think, an interesting moment. How would you perceive the attack here? I mean, there are several ways to do it, but I think there's, you have to kind of see that correct theme um, to really get the maximum you can from the attack. If you kind of miss this moment, you will lose a big part of your advantage. All right, so we have rook f4s, it's an option, knight g4, second option, okay. See knight g4. I see a lot of knight g4s. Okay, so so far knight g4 is the favorite by far. Everyone wants knight g4. Um, one person for rook f4. All right. All right. I think somebody got the right idea just now. Okay. Now people are getting the right idea. Okay. So. The trick here is that we have to knight f5. I don't think that will work because if knight f5 pawn takes, we cannot take with the queen because there's this bishop on c8. Not only that, there's also g6. Rook f7. Okay, rook f7. Think then takes here and the uh, knight f8 is the problem. Don't think that will work. Uh, knight g4. Rook f4. So here's the thing, right? Black played queen e8. Now, in chess, whenever opponent plays a move, we have to always try to understand what are all of his or her ideas of your opponent. It's very important. You have to remember, in chess, it's two people playing. You're not the only one playing the game, right? So you have to always pay attention that your opponent might have certain idea slash ideas, maybe more than one idea. So when he plays queen e8, he has a very interesting defensive idea in mind. If you play the very obvious move, knight g4, that would actually be a very serious inaccuracy. It looks so good, right? And bring the knight in the game, like knight f6 is coming. It looks so good, right? But black has a very interesting defense that kind of spoils your attacking plan, which is uh, what move? What would black play here? Right, exactly. He would play f5. And uh, all of a sudden, uh, we're forced to trade queen because uh, we cannot just take on passant because queen h5. Uh, and, and knight h6 probably doesn't really work either. So all of a sudden, we lose all our attack. And the problem is with on passant, you can only do it now. So you cannot, let's say, queen e8, rook e8, and then do on passant, right? You have to do it immediately. So if we let them play a five like that, we will lose our advantage. So this is a classic example of why, in order to be a great attacking player, it's not enough to just look at your own ideas and see your own creative ideas well. You have to also always pay attention to opponents' defensive resources. That is just so important in chess, because if you miss your opponent's counterplay, opponent's defenses, that will crash your attacks, and they will just not turn out nearly as good, right? So that's why the correct move is rook f6, double exclaim. Putting that rook in there, obstructing that pawn. But now black is completely defenseless. Uh, it's just a lost position. Truth be told, you could have done it like this move order also, but then you have to kind of see the rook f6 idea. That's, that's the point, right? So I think rook f6 is the most practical. And here black really cannot do anything. If he takes, then we do bishop f6, f h7, takes, knight g4, and then rook f1, I think, and yeah, rook f1, f5, knight here, king here, rook f3, and then we go rook g3, rook g6, and let's say black develops normally. 
And of course, we don't recapture the queen, but instead we mate him. Um, yeah, so few people got it, very good. Um, also, I think queen e takes f6. Yeah, e takes f6 is not actually as good because there's some f5. Although here too, white has some attack. Uh, but yeah, rook f6 is very, very strong. Uh, okay, so black played queen f8. And now white played rook f4. Uh, and the point is now black cannot play f5 anymore. Because if he plays f5, okay, you could now take it, right? Because the queen is not hanging. And here, let's say queen g6, white will have a very strong attack. Like let's say queen f7. Rook takes f6, queen takes f f6, queen h7, and then rook f1. And uh, and white should win this. So black black played here, knight g4. And now all these moves that you guys mentioned earlier are good, right? It's just you needed to make sure you prevent opponent's defensive idea. It's so important. And then once you do that, you will be able to get your attack on. So bishop e8, he wants to play f5 again. So what does white do? Boom, knight of six. No f5 for you ever in this game. Takes, takes. Uh, rook c7, takes, takes, queen e5. And finally here, black resigned. All right, so that was, I thought, a very instructive game by uh, Mikhail Tal, showing us how to attack. Okay, so I have a few more games, I guess, in that case. Uh, let me see just for a second. Um, okay, let's look at now this game between Kramnik. This time, so we'll try to look at all the world champions, how all the world champions attack. We saw a Tal game. Now we'll see a Kramnik game. Kramnik is more known as a positional player, but you give him a chance, he can also attack very well. Okay, so this is, I think, a very interesting uh, moment here. So here Black played the move knight b4. Uh, the question is, why not take the pawn? If you take the pawn, knight takes d4, queen takes d4, uh, white will play knight d5. And that's a bit of a problem. And after queen c5, uh, now white has a, a winning sequence. And it starts with, uh, sorry, it starts with bishop takes f6. And uh, if bishop takes f6, if pawn takes d5, then, then bishop takes e7 wins a piece. Uh, if bishop takes f6, queen e4 is the best move, threatening queen h7, and there's no way to defend it besides uh, playing g6, but then we win this piece, and then we win this as well. White will be up at least a piece. And the uh, gf, we go check, king here, and the queen h4. And uh, here again, we will win the piece. And also queen f6 will be a mate threat, so black will probably lose more material as well. So, um, so bishop takes f6 is uh, quite good. Uh, so black, uh, so black played knight b4, better move. And after this, do the, the, the bishop takes f3, which is the correct move. Bishop takes f3. So, what to do here now for white? Well, uh, if queen f3, we go rook c4. So, uh, so white chose to take gf3. And now black implemented uh, here a very nice idea. Knight h5, a3. And now a very interesting idea here for black. Let's see if you guys can find it. This is kind of a little challenging, um, but um, it's... Uh, 
It's a team we'll see a little bit later today uh, to target one of White's weaknesses. So we looked at a lot of examples where, <clears throat> you know, we would sacrifice on the H2 or H7 square. But now we'll see examples where we literally just attack that square. So um, as you could probably tell, the lesson today involves mostly H2, H7 squares and how we attack involving these weak squares. Because once the person castles, those are probably the most common weak squares for the castle side. Um, yeah, so the correct move, let's, let's, let's just give maybe one more minute, let's see. Yeah, the correct move is bishop d6 here because if a b, we go queen h4, or queen g5 maybe even better. And after this, we go queen f4, and then we threaten queen takes h2, and black uh, should win. So uh, yeah, so bishop d6 is uh, is very strong. Okay, uh, white is already kind of almost losing. It's very hard to defend this now. So white played f4. Uh, and here, black played queen h4. Uh, if a, b, knight f4 and knight e2 would be the idea. So uh, white played f3, knight takes f4, queen d2. And now black to play, try to find the best uh, uh, attacking sequence for black. So you just have to make sure you, you mention which knight, because uh, both knights can go to that square. So, And again, I suggest, uh, <clears throat> don't just suggest one move, but try to give a follow-up. No, I don't think f knight, because if you go f knight to d3, I will take your knight here on b4. So I think you would rather do it with this knight, actually. Yeah, and then um, here, if he goes here, check, and knight of two is winning. And the bishop d3, knight d3, yeah, he can never take on d3 because of the mate. Yeah, and if rook b1, we take on b2 and play rook c4. And uh, Swidler realized he had a very bad position. It was a rapid game and he just uh, decided to resign. Of course, you guys should not resign, but you know, at the high level, when they're completely lost, you know, they give respect for each other and uh, they don't play out completely lost position, but certainly at your level, you should not resign here yet. At least at most of you guys' level, um, under, under, let's say 2000. Okay, so let's, uh, let's continue. And now I want to look at the Fisher game, a famous Fisher game, where Fisher was able to miniature Benko in a very nice style. So Fisher Benko. <clears throat> well, so this game I think is a very good illustration <clears throat> of how <clears throat> to play against these side openings. I believe that, uh, well, you could play in many different ways against these, these kind of G6 openings, but I kind of like either bringing uh, three pawns to the center like that, or like this. I think uh, if they're giving you the center, it's not a bad idea to get full control over it, but certainly there are many ways to play and get a good position. Knight of six, knight of three, castles, bishop d3. This is still a theoretical line. And here black played the mistake, bishop g4. Most commonly they play knight a6 or knight c6. Um, to try to, knight c6 would be to try to play for e5 
and knight a6 to play for c5. But bishop g4 is inaccurate because now white played h3, takes, queen takes, and the white sort of uh, has two bishops, has a, the well-developed queen, and is poised to get a very nice attack. Knight c6. So here, uh, white played bishop e3, which is the best move. <clears throat> Um, I think e5 is inaccurate because then that allows knight takes d4 intermezzo, attacking the queen. While d5 is also inaccurate because after, let's say, knight b4, the black bishop on g7 is going to be uh, quite a strong piece. So I believe bishop e3 is better. And now black played e5. If black were to play knight d7, white would play uh, probably e5 to try to restrict both the knight and the bishop. And then white's plan is to castle long, play h4, h5, and the white will have a very strong attack here. If knight b4, we can castle knight d3, rook d3, and then we'll play e5, h4, h5, and stuff like that. So black, I thought, played the best move, e5. And here, white played well. He played d takes e5, d takes e5, and f5. Uh, so I think um, the pawn on the 5 is good in this position because it's going to be uh, an attacking piece. Like now, white threatens the g4, g5. Uh, and also, you don't want to play d5 here because then he will take here. And then the bishop on g7, once again, becomes a very good piece. So it's important for white to keep that bishop on g7 very restricted. So now black took on a five to try to get counterplay. Now here it's a very interesting instructive moment, I thought, because here white can definitely take with the e pawn, which looks the tempting option, because now if we go g4, g5, f6, it will just be game over, right? White will be completely winning strategically. But Fisher was a world champion for a reason, right? He was a great, well, one of the world's greats for a reason. He always paid attention. If I do this, what is my opponent's best chance here? What is my opponent's best, best counterplay? And he saw that black here could then create counterplay with the move like e4. <clears throat> and suddenly this is not so clear because after e4, 94, 95, all of those black pieces are suddenly coming to life, and uh, white is not yet castled. So it actually gets very tricky for white. And the same thing happens after it takes 94. Also, a lot of lines now are getting complicated, and it's potentially in black's favor. So that's why Fisher did not allow it. He made sure that he keeps that bishop on g7 still closed. All right, so knight d4, uh, queen f2, and knight e8. Knight e8, the idea is to play knight d6, c5, c4, and stuff like that. And uh, here, white could also castle long, probably, but here he chose to castle short, knight d6. And now white needs to bring the queen to the king's side, right? So white did it like this, queen g3, queen g4, queen h5. Of course, he can't go right away because this is the queen. And since e2 and f3 are taken, he does it like this. And here, most likely, black should create counterplay with the move like f5. But uh, black played here, and that allowed the white to inch closer, the white queen to inch closer to the black king side, queen g4. And now the queen is poised to be a very strong attacking position. And here, black made a decisive mistake already, played queen e8. And now, white took on d4, and black took here. Okay, so now, important question comes. How should white continue your attack here? Now, if you want to get the right, ah, okay. If you want to get, I was about to say, um, yeah, if you want to get the right answer, uh, you probably want to think a little longer, unless you already know this game. Um, 
So let's see what you guys come up with. Is this the game from 1962? Uh, it might be, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it's 1962, yes. Yeah, it's definitely 1960s. And I think I know the ending to this game a little bit. Okay, then, 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 then don't say it. Then don't say it. Then don't say it, please. Uh, okay. All right, so I think the people who thought for a little longer were able to find the right move. But people who played fast, uh, a lot of you guys missed it. So... Obviously, the e5 is a very tempting move, right? Because what can be more logical? Attacking the knight and attacking checkmate. This is, of course, the first move we should consider. However, what do you guys think black can do in defense against e5? So we just saw this idea. And um, this just proves that uh, all these world champions, they studied previous champions, right? Because Tao played that game that I showed you earlier in his career, right? So it's quite possible that Fischer already knew the theme and knew the defensive idea, the F5, right? So that made it easier for him to figure out that E5, F5 is actually not so clear. Now there's no mate, queen is attacked, and if you trade, you're not better anymore. So therefore, the correct idea here is to play rook F6, double exclaim, obstructing, the pawn on f, f file and white is winning <clears throat> because after king g8 if uh, bishop f6 of course e5 wins and if d takes c3 you play e5 h6 takes king g8 rook h8 bishop takes queen h7 so black tried the uh, king g8 kind of uh, best chance so e5 anyway and h6 yeah, and here there are some practical tricks still, because for example, if you do this move, which is not so good, black can play queen takes e5, and uh, black gets uh, a lot of counterplay here. Uh, white, black actually does not, white does not actually end up being up a piece anymore. And uh, ed looks very tempting. The idea is after this queen here, but the problem is queen check. And then let's say rook e8 and black again escapes. But the thing is black realized that, white realized here that black actually has no productive move. He cannot move the knight away because of queen f5. So what did he do? He simply got rid of this threat, the knight threat, and he played knight e2. And now black has no way to defend the piece because if he goes here, queen h6 will be made next move. And if he moves the knight somewhere, queen f5 will be made next move. So he will lose the knight, and uh, so Benko decided to uh, to hang the towel and resign. Uh, okay. Throw the towel and resign, sorry. Okay, now uh, this was a Fischer game, world champion game, but we'll see that some of these motifs can even exist in lower level games, non-grandmaster games. For example, this is a game between two uh, lower level masters, but they also were able to showcase a very nice idea, very similar to the one in the Fischer or Tal game, the rook f6 idea. So first of all, pay attention to this idea. I think this one is very interesting. h5 and then h4, and then rook takes h4. Just stacking the rook with the idea of weakening the h2 square, opening up the queen on d8, and getting a massive attack. So this by itself is already a very interesting creative idea by black. And white certainly did not react the best way to it, because black's already doing very well. But here white played queen e1, which is uh, definitely a mistake. Should have played another move. And now the question to you is, how can black now play in this position?
Ah, there you go. Townsend, very nice job. You got it. You understood the theme. Very good. Robert, very good. You got it. Yes. Like some people are giving the right answer. Uh, yeah, I mean, there are many tempting moves. Elisa, very good. Yes. Um, okay, so there are many tempting moves, right? But if we go queen h4, white has a defense. White can play f4, offering a queen trade and blocking, obstructing the bishop on d6. Bishop h2, I think, is not so clear because if we do that, uh, white can try to defend with some f3, and uh, it's not that clear here. Queen c7 is possible, but again, it's not. It's not that winning. We would rather have the queen, the queen attack h2, right? We would rather have it the other way around. Yeah, so the correct move is bishop f3, double explain, obstructing that pawn, right? Very similar idea, just this time with the bishop, uh, not with uh, not with the rook. And here white loses because after takes, check, I mean queen h4, h3, queen here, and it's made next move, queen h2. Similar idea. If bishop takes, takes, h3, queen h3, wins. So only move is bishop c1, but queen h4, h3. And uh, how would you finish the attack here? Well, queen f4, he just defended against it, right? Because he wants to do bishop takes, so... So make sure you're careful with that. Knight g3. Knight g3 I don't think will work because I can take this guy. Don't think there's an attack here. But knight f4 is correct move because now there is no way. If bishop takes, queen takes, wins. If pawn takes, we go queen g5, attacking the queen g2. And then we go queen f4. And again, the white queen is so poorly placed, white can't even move the rook away and then allow queen H, the king to escape. The white queen takes away squares from the rook. That's kind of the point. And, and the same queen on the e1, same bishop f, f3 square, so similar, just from a different uh, color. And bishop f3, queen h3 would win with the knight takes e2 next move. So for example, if some random move, takes and queen h2 mate. And finally, I'll show one of my own games. Uh, I'll show one of my own games. This is a game I played a long time ago. I was an international master back then and I played an expert. Uh, actually light master, but he had a lower rating. And I'll show it relatively quickly. Okay, so you played queen a5, he wants to threaten knight e4, so I played bishop d3, e5, knight f3. Okay, so if ed, knight d4, bishop g4, uh, d5, d5, f e5. Yeah, and here, <laughs> black should probably, <laughs> black should probably play knight d7. But he played bishop f3, which is a mistake because he allowed my queen uh, to get into the game. So bishop f4. Yeah, and here, black probably should play queen h5 to try to offer a queen trade, or play queen e6 to keep his queen near his king for defense. But uh, black played queen a5, which is inaccurate. Castles, bishop c5, and of course king h1, because we don't want to exchange pieces here, right? Because we have a good attack potentially and uh, and we don't want to allow queen trade. And also we don't want to weaken the e5 square. So we don't play bishop e3, we play king h1 and castles. Okay, so here white already has a very big advantage. The question is how would you attack here? How would you continue? So in this position, one, one move is okay. Okay, I think you guys are getting it. Yeah, e5 is, is, is the best move. Bishop e5, 
I think this should be seven, not so clear. But e5 is very natural, right? Because we open up that bishop for the attack on that th7 square. Remember, guys, the h7 square. So we have to start with e5. Uh, and also, we remove that knight from the goods post. Remove that defender. So black did not want to play knight d7 to obstruct the knight on b8. So he played knight d5 here. Knight takes d5, c takes d5. And here, of course, I could win the board with queen takes d5. But I realized that he has such poor development here. All his pieces are on the queen side. And I have four pieces uh, attacking the king. And he barely has any defense. So I thought there has to be a way to get to the king. And here, the truth is that there are many ways to get a very big advantage. Um, but I chose what I thought was the most clever. Um, the bishop h7 idea might work actually, and then rook f3, rook h3. I thought it's during the game it's not so clear because he can play some queen b6 and f6, but apparently it was also good. But I, I decided this. I thought, yeah, so if I thought if I go queen g3 or queen h3 or any of these moves, he will play g6. Uh, no matter what I do, he will play g6, he will try to defend the position. So I thought. What if I can get rid of the pawn somehow? Okay, remove the guard. Uh, well, that's how I came up with the move. Bishop h6, exclamation mark. And, uh, and this move is, uh, is very, very powerful. And uh, because if he takes, check, and queen f5 is, is made. So he had to play queen b6. Now, luckily, I saw that move, he, that he could play this move. It's his only defensive move. Uh, and it's a very tricky move, right? Because if I'm not, not careful, if I play queen f5 here or queen g4, he will take this and defend mate. And suddenly, I will be left with down a piece. But uh, thankfully, I, I calculated this ahead of time. And I saw that I can play bishop takes g7 here. I can continue my attack and really go after that weak square. King takes, queen, h, queen g4, uh, king h8, kind of the only move. Queen h5, attacking h7 again. And here, my opponent played, uh, I mean, there's not much he can do. He can play queen g6, give up the queen. That's probably the best he can do here. Because in the other lines, he gets made. So my opponent tried uh, to play h6 here. But now, what move finished them off? Right, of course, rook f6. Also rook f6. And here he resigned. And uh, the funny thing about this game is that my opponent was amazed that I played this game. And he told me, I played like Fisher. And I'm wondering why he said that. Because I think at that moment, I might have not been familiar with that game. But now I understand why he said that. All of the ideas and themes were so similar to that Fisher game, right? And finally, one last question. What if f5? What is the best way to play after f5? Yeah, very good. Of course, yeah, we play on Bassant and uh, after a queen c7. F7, yeah, we'll, we'll just win the game. Yes, of course. Yeah, so I think it was a very good attack. But of course, I needed to see ahead of time what I would do after queen b6. Because if I if he plays queen b6 and then I just go back, then that would be kind of silly, right? So it's important when you see a good idea to look at opponent's idea, but then to continue calculating. Continue to try to see if you can still make it work. And uh, so that's how what it takes to be a better chess player. So I hope you guys enjoyed these attacking ideas, these attacking games that I showed you uh, by these great champions. Uh, and and uh, now is your chance to ask me some questions, uh, either via chat or or you can uh, uh, unmute yourself and uh, ask me questions. Now it's time for question and answer. You can ask me either about any of these games or you can ask me something in general. So it's an opportunity for you guys now to participate. I 
talked for like an hour. Now it's your turn to Alex. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to th thank you for the lesson. I really enjoyed it. I was tired and I almost passed out, but I survived through the lesson. And these lessons, I could use them for the rest of my life in tournaments. Oh, I'm, well, I'm sorry to hear that you were tired, but I hope that, yeah, you'll still learn a lot. And uh, I'm very happy that you uh, sat through it. And, uh, you know, it's uh, it shows a great champion character. So very nice, very nice to done. And wish you best of luck in your chess career. Um, all right. Um, let's see. So, okay, some questions. What are some of the, what are some of the other sacrifices in attack? squares and ideas well of course before the king is castle there's attacks on f7 square and sometimes you have attacks on the g7 square uh is weak uh i mean that's uh, kind of um uh, very general question but i would say uh look at uh games of like people like uh tal and alakine the greatest of attacking players kasparov and then you'll see much more ideas to answer your question, Jay. Are there books on these themes from tonight? Well, I think um, game collections by Alakine, Tao, Kasparov will definitely have a lot of these themes. Are there any specific tech books on these particular themes? I'm not really sure, not that I know from the top of my head, but uh, I'm sure that any tactical book will have these themes at some point. Uh, okay, no problem, Ishan. What openings do I like to play? Well, uh, that's kind of a very general question. Obviously, I, you know, I can play many different openings, but it also really depends on what uh, my opponent will play, right? So I, it's kind of very hard to answer such a question. Uh, but you know, to answer it short, I'll just say whatever I win with. What are some books you recommend? Okay, that's. Um, I kind of, I guess, ready to answer that question, I think, but it also depends on what level you're at. I think, um, because, and I think it also depends on what your strengths and weaknesses are. So you should try to buy books which are more tailored towards uh, your level. But I would say if you're under 1600, then I would definitely say mostly tactical books and um, maybe some games with miniature games uh, because you want to study in like an enjoyable way. Uh, all right, let's see here. Um, okay, your advice on how to practice calculation. Well, I think um, it's, yeah, it's, it's obviously not easy. I think, uh, uh, I think I, I would say that uh, the best expert on that theme is probably Agard. He's like specializing on this and maybe Dvoretsky. I think, but it's really nothing more than just straining your brain and just really maybe not feeling sorry for yourself and uh, putting these positions at the board and uh, sitting there analyzing for like five to 10 minutes of problem and uh, really trying to, you know, think about all your uh, candidate options. But I think one thing I want to mention about calculation, which I think is very important, a lot of people make the mistake of uh, calculating only one line for like 10 minutes and forgetting about everything else. So it's very important before you start calculating deeply to make a list of all the candidate moves all the logical moves that you can play or your opponent, uh, and then your opponent's reply. The key with good calculation is that it's important not to make a mistake on move one or move two, because it would be silly to calculate a deep 10 move line and then miss something uh, simple on move one, right? That your opponent can do, or maybe miss some much more obvious better continuation on move one, right? So that's it's important to have a discipline with, with calculation. I think that's the best advice I can give from the top of my head. Uh, what year did I become a grandmaster? 2009, I got all my norms. 2010 is when I officially uh, got the title. Um, okay, so Walter asks, it appears in the opening that bishop takes knight is a bad idea. Is it ever a good idea to take king's knight? Yeah, definitely. Um, in many positions it is. I think it's better in more closed positions, probably. I mean, it's, it's hard to give the general rule of thumb. It kind of comes with experience, but I would say in more closed positions, it's probably a better idea. I mean, in these positions, the queen uh, got to have three and it was like an attacking piece. 
and uh, it was a position where you could get be attacked as black, so that's kind of why. Uh, but if it's a closed structure, then it's definitely a logical idea sometimes. Uh, who is your favorite chess player? I don't have a particular favorite chess player, not one. I mean, I try to learn maximum I can from every world champion. All right, so um, somebody says I play London and Pierce, okay. What type of time control do you recommend? Um, well, it depends on what your goal is in chess. If you want to become a, a strong master, then I would say, uh, or higher, then I would say you should not play anything under 15 minutes at the moment. If you're an, un I think if you're under 2000 player, you really should try to avoid playing uh, blitz or especially the bullet, avoid playing time controls under 15 minutes. So if you're playing online, I would say anything between 15 minutes and like 60 minutes is probably best. And um, if you have a chance to play over the board or when you get a chance to play over the board, then probably, you know, you'll play more classical time control. Um, let's see. How do you become masters like I am or NM? With a lot of hard work. Um, okay. Um, I think I did. Was there any question that I... Um, and, and also not just hard work, but passion. You have to love the game. You have to love what you're doing. And you have to do it consistently. Um, all right. Was there anyone I did not answer? 